The Italians, God bless them, are very, very upset. This is a fiat, but it's not an Italian fiat. It's a Stellantis fiat. And in case you don't know, that's not a country. It's a massive producer of automotive products. And quite a few years ago, they purchased, amongst other brands, Fiat. And the Italians are very upset because this car is no longer made in Italy. But there's some Italian references in the car. So this is essentially the big brother or sister of the Fiat 500, which you know needs no introduction. So this is a, a larger version, essentially, of that car. Uh, the front is reasonably similar, very cute headlights, nice little cuts into the bumper for the uh, daytime running lights. This is the higher spec version of it. So lower grille is the same color as the red. Not even the red color can convince the Italians that it is Italian. Uh, around the side that we have 600 on the hub, uh, centre part of the wheel, and also in the lower part here. It doesn't actually quite say 600, but you get the idea. So, quite a, a cute little car, quite a, a good looking little car, and, you know, an inoffensive car. People will let you out in junctions in this thing, because it looks nice. There's chrome throughout the door frames, quite unusual in this day and age, a lot of brands have dropped that. Other styling cues include a, a nice black boot spoiler. There is, of course, a very important wiper for rainy Irish days. Little Fiat badge there, say nothing. The rear taillights look very impressive. More 600 detail here. And this is the bit that has really annoyed the Italians. <laughs> so, it's an Italian colour scheme on the car. I'm not joking, by the way, this is a true story. Now, you can get a hybrid version of this car, but this is the full BEV version, which should promise somewhere between sorry, 350 and 400 kilometers range. Not the biggest battery in the world, but very usable. Has 11 kilowatt AC charging, so you can charge it on a street charger reasonably fast. And also it will do up to 100 kilowatt DC charging. This higher spec version of the 600 gets a 385 liter boot with an electric tailgate. Dimension wise, it's 4.17 meters long. And under here, there is a little bit of space. You can drop this floor apart to give you that full 385, or you can use it as an area to hide your type two cables if you like bringing them with you as a safety net. So there's a shopping hook holder, a crisp white light, not a flexible parcel shelf, but a decent sized boot for a small car. Whether you like it or not, you're getting seats with the Fiat name stitched. You might notice it at first look, but then once you see it, you can't unsee it. There's a USB-C charging port in the back and some map pockets on the back of the seats. It is more of a, a two-seater. I mean, the literature that you get with the car says it will seat five, but it's definitely a, a, gonna be a more comfortable place for two people to sit. They can charge stuff, there isn't an armrest. There is good head height though for a, a smaller car, so I'd be, be happy enough with that. But yeah, there's a hump on the floor. It's not a ground up EV platform in this car, um, but you know, definitely two in the front, two in the back, no issues. In the front then, the seats have the 600 logo embossed and stitched into the top of the seat. So another reminder of what you're in. There's a sliding armrest and a very handy storage area here, which can be split into three separate areas. And in this La Prima trim version, which is the most expensive at almost 38,000 euro, which is definitely a lot, you get this area that's uh, covered up, but you can also fold this, take it away. And then you have a huge storage area. It's 15 liters in total of storage in the car in the front, including a wireless charger. And there's also USB A and C charging ports. Uh, just under here. For those who are not huge fans of screens for climate control and physical buttons, Fiat have included all of this switch gear. I think overall there's nice curves, there's nice inserts in the dashboard, it's bright, it's airy, it's an okay place to be. Inside the cabin area of the car, it's quite spacious. You don't feel particularly constrained by the surroundings. Lots of storage down here. There's also a floating shelf underneath the physical button so you can chuck a phone in there and keep it out of distractions way. And this floating screen 
does a nice job, as does the center instruments. They're crisp and clear. They give you all the basic information that you need, including your fuel consumption, which is 16.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is pretty good and definitely suggests you'll get well over 300 kilometers out of a single charge on this car. Now, if you start driving on motorways and it's particularly cold, that might change. Oh, and a bit of a shameless plug. This is Radio Nova, and I'm on it every Saturday morning from 10 till 2 in the afternoon. And even if you're watching this outside of Ireland, you can get it on the app. Something else that people love these days, physical buttons on the steering wheel. Not haptic, not weird digital ones, just physical buttons for controlling things. So the red spec of the car is 32,995. That's, that's okay. Uh, the higher spec, which is La Prima, uh, is almost 38,000 euro, and that's not as okay. And this high spec version of the car is pretty safe as well. It can detect uh, cyclists, it's got lane keep assist, it has blind spot, it's got a good camera, and Tom Tom navigation. Not a particularly nice day today, it's fair to say for filming cars, but uh, you know, it's work. So I can't really say, sorry, work, I can't do you today because it's lashing. So it's a, it's a comfortable car, not an overly harsh suspension. I mean, obviously there's extra weight in this compared to the uh, the hybrid version because you've got some batteries underneath, but it doesn't feel particularly heavy. I mean, the best way I could describe it is it's uh, got enough power, but it's not really a car you're ever going to want to be flying around in anyway. But it, it has plenty of pace in a straight line. There's a little bit of noise from the tires, and in this case, the rain sprang up into the car today. The steering is light. One criticism, really, is just, it's just fine to drive. It's not exciting. There's no real sense of feedback in the steering. So that maybe sporty edge connected with the Fiat 500 heritage is, is not really there. Uh, a lot of the switch gear I've seen before and stuff from uh, Jeep and the Avenger, so there's there's quite a few borrowed buttons and I'm sure parts uh, beneath But it's kind of true to its word in terms of efficiency You know, you'll be able to charge this quickly if you need to at a hundred uh, kilowatt 54 kilowatt hour battery is perfectly fine for a car of this size the world doesn't need every single EV to do seven and eight hundred kilometers you know one liter small uh, you know, A, B segment cars, they never did a thousand kilometers either when they had petrol or diesel in them. And that didn't seem to bother people as much. It just seems to be another area that people can sort of poke at with the electric thing. There isn't a squeak or a rattle in this car. Yeah, some of the touch points, not quite the ones you'll be using all the time, feel a little bit cheaper, but steering wheel feels good as I demonstrated you have those physical buttons i do think the fiat stuff and the seats is, is a bit too much and everywhere you look in this car there is a set of numbers with the 600 staring at you at all times it's a bit too much i mean we get it it's a fiat 600 certainly from a driving point of view it feels light to the touch it's got enough urgency in a straight line uh, it handles okay, that's when you do really feel the weight come into play, but the steering wheel feel, it doesn't feel like a, a heavier uh, battery electric vehicle version of the 600. Now Fiat last month ceased production or, or paused production on the 500. Um, it was only a temporary thing, but it just gave you a little insight into the fact that a brand like Salantis can turn things on and off, I suppose. But also, the brands themselves are reacting to changing demand. Uh, last year, a very pent-up demand year for battery electric cars. We've seen uh, sales figures fall in Ireland and Germany, but in France, they're soaring ahead because there's better incentives um, and better prices. Let's call a spade a spade. Like uh, it's it's a lot to ask for 38,000 euro for this higher spec version of the car when you can buy, and it often comes up as the benchmark, the Tesla Model 3 for in and around the same money. You know, it's, it's a bit of a no brainer. At the cheaper end, absolutely. Uh, it's a bit more affordable, but the price just 
it is too expensive for albeit a well spec car but it's it's not a particularly big car and uh, yeah it's it's it needs to have a couple of thousand at least shaved off the price of the La Prima uh, trim version so time for my summary please do let me know uh, down below in the, in the comments what you think of the car uh, would it make a good second car maybe for your house you might also consider liking this video sharing it subscribing it truly does help it's like a little extra placard to youtube to go hey this guy's all right give him more loving give him more exposure I think one of the reasons the Italians are probably so upset is because Stellantis have built a better Fiat 600 than they would have ever. And all that aside, it's a decent little electric car. Definitely on the higher price version for the La Prima spec. It's nice to get it, but in the low 30s seems a bit more of a natural home for a battery electric vehicle of this size. Does it still have a girly slant to it? Does it lean into that a bit more than full-blooded red raw male interest in this car? I'm not quite sure. It's definitely bigger than a Fiat 500. Um, but let me know your thoughts, what you think. Would it get you into a cute little electric Barbie car? Let me know in the comments down below. And goodbye from, it's not raining in Barcelona today, it's just raining in Dublin. See you in the next one.